Hello, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you go about cleaning your Valiant filter. Now, these are exactly the same as a Spirotech filters. Spirotech make the filters, and then Valiant have relabeled them as their own filters. So both filters are exactly the same. So I'm gonna show you how you clean these filters out with a simple flush. And then I'm gonna show you how you can do a more deep clean by taking the filter off and giving it a good flush out that way. Somewhere in the video, I will show you a little problem which I come across where when you open a valve, no water comes out at all and how you go about fixing that if you have that problem. Now, I am not a fan of these filters at all. And I explain the reasons why as I go through the video. But if you're having a Valiant boiler installed and you want to have that extended guarantee, then you kind of stuck with having one of these filters installed. At the end of the video, I will show you two of these filters, which I had to remove from systems and I'll replace them with a MagnaClean filter and I'll explain why I did that at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around for that. And lastly, I wanted to let you know that I made several videos all about how to operate and set up your Valiant boiler. Now I find most of my customers have never touched the controls on the front of their boiler. So in the videos, I will show you how to adjust your hot water temperature, how to adjust your central heating temperature, and also that hitting comfort setting, which may be making your boiler really inefficient. Make sure you watch the video for your boiler and you find them down in the comments because it'll make your boiler more efficient, which means it uses less gas, which means it will reduce your gas bill. Right, now we just need to whiz through my speed up intro and then I get straight on with this video. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful at all, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. You can click on that subscribe if you like the video, click on the bell if you want to receive a notification and of course share the video with your friends. A big thank you to everyone who has thanked me by getting me a cup of coffee and leaving a donation in my toolbox fund. It is really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Oh and don't forget to check out my website where I've categorized all my videos and I've left links to all the products and parts that I recommend. So here's our Valiant filter and we want to clean this filter out. Uh, this is a brand new filter, which I fitted when I fitted this boiler here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to turn the power off. Now on this Valiant Ecotech Plus, you just push the button on the front and that will turn the boiler off. Now, if you have a different boiler and you're not sure how to turn it off, you can just use the switch on the wall to turn it off. So make sure you switch that switch off and that will turn the power off because we don't want the boiler running when we're cleaning this filter. Now the filter is held onto the pipe work by these two compression nuts just here. And then we have the filter body, which is the big brass bit, which is held on by this big knurled nut here. Then we have the magnet, which collects the magnetite. And then of course, there's a valve on the bottom here so we can drain the filter out. We need to remove the magnet when we clean out the filter and it just pulls down like that. On the back of the magnet, there's a clip which clips onto a little knob which is on the back of the filter body. So this magnet can only go back on in one position. And on the back of the filter there, you'll see that little brass knob there which is where it clips on. Now this filter is fitted on a combination boiler and there's a couple of ways we can go about cleaning it out. And uh, the easiest way is just to get a bowl, put it underneath your filter, then that remove the cap which is on the bottom here. It's maybe quite tight. I always then completely take it off because it has a habit of flicking underneath the water and splashing it around. So now we've got a nice clear area so the water can come out nice and easily. Now all we need to do is to just get our adjustable spanner and we can just open up this valve, which would then let the water come out and hopefully flush out all of that magnetite out of the filter. You can see the water comes out quite fast and it does have a habit of just spraying around a lot when you're doing that. So make sure any surfaces around are protected by an old towel or something. So if some of the water does spray out onto the floor, it's not going to make a mess of your nice carpet because this black magnetite stains really badly. Now, if when you open your valve, no water comes out, then it's most likely because the filter here has become blocked up with magnetite and other bits of dirt. Now, all you can do there is to fully open the valve and then get a screwdriver and then poke it up inside the valve there and wiggle it about inside to clear any of that dirt. You may need to push a screwdriver quite a long way in, but then all of a sudden it's going to gush out with water and that water may be filthy black and be spraying around everywhere. So make sure you've got a bowl there, maybe cover the filter and your hand with a towel. So when it does gush out, you contain it within the towel and the bowl. 
Now the other method I use most often is I just use an old wash machine hose and you can see I could just screw that onto the bottom of the filter like that and I'm using the angled end here because it just makes it easier to put in there and now I could just put the hose into the sink or maybe into the bucket and then it doesn't spray around. It comes out as a nice smooth stream. Now I can use my adjustable spanner again and open up the valve and then we see the water coming out into the bowl down here. Okay, and there it is coming out and you can see it's now not spraying around it just sort of comes out nice and smoothly but do be careful because if you do open a valve up fully you may find that the hose just jumps out of your bucket and sprays around so just be careful when you're doing that now it's worth noting that the cap which we've taken off also has a fitting on the bottom of it so we can open and close the valve so we can use this to open and close the valve but i just find it's a little bit fiddly and i always use my adjustable spanner now one of the things i don't like about these filters and something that you need to be aware of if you're going to clean your filter is that when you clean it out you're going to drop the pressure on your system and it's going to reduce that pressure right down to probably zero and then you have to top the boiler back up again so do make sure that you know how to top your boiler up because once you've done this your boiler will definitely have stopped working if you have a valiant boiler and it will be coming up with the f22 fault and of course adding fresh water to your system is not great because you're also adding fresh oxygen which will corrode anything made of steel in your system like your radiators and of course draining off lots of water from your boiler is also going to dilute the amount of inhibitor which you have in your system which again is not great so you might want to think about adding some more inhibitor after you finish cleaning your filter and of course i made a video on how you go about adding more inhibitor into your system once you're happy there is no more magnetite coming out of your filter you can then just close the valve again and remove the hose then we can just replace the magnet so we just push that up onto the filter find a little clip and push it up and there we go that just stays there then of course put the cap back on make sure you put the little rubber piece on first to hold it in place so you don't lose it and then just screw the cap onto the bottom of your filter make sure that you haven't lost the little rubber cap which is in there because if it's not on there and the valve leaks a little bit you will find water dripping out of your cap and there we go that's the valiant filter all cleaned out in the comments you could let me know what you think of these filters especially if you're an engineer and you have a preference for a particular filter then you can let us know and if we take a look in the bowl we can see all the little bits of magnetite which the filter has collected so it stopped all those bits from getting into the boiler now i need to top the boiler back up again because it'll probably be at zero bar if you have a combination boiler or a system boiler or you may need to top it up because you want to do some more flushing of the filter make sure that you do know how to top up your boiler before you start this process and of course i've made lots of other videos on how to top up your various boilers and you can find those links down in the description now if you want to do a more deep clean of your filter you can remove it completely and wash it out and i'll show you how to do that now now what we want to do is to close both of these valves on our boiler these are central heating valves one there and the one over here so we want to close both of these and that's going to stop the water from coming out of our boiler and it will keep the pressure in the boiler now the best way to close these valves is with a four millimeter allen key bit like this um, you can use a flat screwdriver but this works a lot better now all we need to do is to pop the bit up into the valve and then turn it around these valves only turn one way so make sure you turn them in the correct direction as you'll see the direction of turning them in now and then when the line is across the valve like that the valve is then closed you see that's across there and that's closed on that one and this valve here is also closed so now the boiler is isolated from the rest of your central heating system we can now do the same again and we remove the cap from the bottom of the filter take it off so it's not in the way remove the magnet we can then put a bowl underneath the filter we can then open up the valve and then we want to make sure that all the water has finished coming out of the filter and there is no more water coming out because we don't want to remove the filter if we still got water coming out of the system now i can remove the filter body and the way i do that is to just hold the body and hold the knurled nut and then rotate the filter around hold the nut and then gradually twist it backwards and forwards until i can then undo the knurled nut and take the filter off be careful because the filter is quite heavy so be careful you don't drop it and break something 
And there we go, here's the filter body. Just a little word of caution, be careful when you remove the filter, there's a chance that water might start coming out of the housing which is on the pipework. So just keep an eye on that because you don't want to walk away and come back and find that half the system has emptied itself all over your floor. Now this filter is not designed to come apart, it is screwed together from these two pieces here, that one and that one, but if you do want to take it apart you're going to need a really strong vise and a very big spanner because it does not come apart easily. Now I have taken a couple of these apart so you don't have to and I'll show you that in just a minute or two and another reason why I do not particularly like these filters. We can now wash the filter out through the flow part and through the return part and then also through the valve and that way we get out as much bits as we can. You can see there's a few extra bits coming out already and I haven't really done a lot. Let's just use my bowl, let's just put that in there and see if we get any more bits out. Now bear in mind this is a brand new filter, obviously the system has been flushed out so there are still a few bits in the system which is why we fit these filters because it's an old system and you can never get out all the magnetite no matter how much flushing you do. Now you can see there's a few more bits in the bowl there of magnetite which were not flushed out when I cleaned the filter when it was still attached to the pipework. I'm sure you can understand that after one or two years of use the amount of bits which will be stuck inside the filter on the simple flush will be significantly more which is why I'm showing you this method of cleaning the filter. Now before we refit the filter we just want to take this little o-ring out of here because this is the o-ring which seals it and stops it from leaking and we want to take that off there just use a screwdriver and gently prise it out obviously do not damage it because then it may leak and then we just want to clean that o-ring up and then grease it up with some silicon grease so it's all nice and lubricated. So get a nice bit of clean kitchen paper and you just wipe the seal off and make sure there are no little bits of magnetite stuck to that and it's all nice and clean. I then get my little pot of silicon grease and I just get some of that grease and I'll just wipe that all over the o-ring and make sure it's nicely lubricated. The silicon lubricant also keeps the seal in good condition so it stops it from drying up so the o-ring will last a lot longer. There we go that's nicely greased. Now before you put the o-ring back onto the filter make sure that where the seal fits in that slot is nice and clean so this one's brand new so it looks absolutely perfectly clean but I would highly recommend that you get a tissue and just wipe it around the groove where the seal fits in making sure it's spotlessly clean. Now that's nicely lubricated and ready to be refitted. Make sure the valve is closed I'm using my adjustable spanner and I just turn it and make sure that is shut. When the lever is across the valve it is closed. Now before you refit the filter again just get a tissue and wipe inside the housing and make sure the seating where the o-ring fits is perfectly clean. And then I just do up the knurled nut until it goes tight. Once it goes tight I can then hold the knurled nut and then lift the body of the filter up and then holding the nut still I can then rotate the valve down which will tighten up onto the nut. And I do this several times until it is nice and tight like that. Just turn it one last time and that is now good and tight. Don't go crazy with this but just nicely so it's nipped up. And then I just give it a final straighten like that. And now I can add the magnet, so I'll just push that back onto there, push it up, it clips up into place like that, see so clips up, it stays kind of loose on there, but that's the way it should be. Then replace the cap, put the little rubber ring onto the valve first of all, and then we can do up the cap once again, make sure that seal is in there, so there is definitely going to make a seal when you do that up. I just make one last double check, make sure the valve is shut, which it is, and there we go, that's it all done, cleaned out. Now all I need to do is to open up both the valves on the boiler again. When you do this make sure that both the valves are in line with the pipework. If they're not in line your central heating will not heat up even though the boiler will come on. Then I've just got to top the boiler back up and this is a Valiant Ecotech Plus so it has the handles on the bottom so I can turn that one there like that. Then turn this one here just to open that one slightly and then go back look at the display and see what pressure I've got. Now at the moment it's showing zero zero bar so that's no pressure at all and there's water going into it so I'm going to keep an eye on that pressure. I'm going to open the valve up a little bit further so I get more pressure into the boiler. I'm going to take that pressure up to around about 1.5 and there we go we can see the pressure is now rising up 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and keep on going and you can see the tank there 
that level is increasing and I take that tank level to roughly in the middle of the two dotted lines. Now I'm happy that the pressure is correct. I can now go back underneath the boiler and make sure that both the valves are shut. So this valve here, make sure that one is shut. And I go to this one here and make sure that one there is shut also. And there we go. That's it. That's how you top up your Valiant Ecotech Plus combination boiler. Now this Valiant filter I fitted with the Valiant boiler, which gave the boiler a 10 year guarantee. Now the filter didn't come with any isolation valves, so I fitted these additional valves. So I can completely isolate the filter if I want to, and I can flush the filter from the flow side, and I can also flush it from the return side. And I can also obviously take the filter off and give it a deep clean if I want to. Now the cleaning process is exactly the same as before, but now I can close both the valves and then open one of them up to get the water flushing from one side. And you can see I'm doing that now, flushing it out using the valve on the bottom. Pull that water away. I can now open up the valve on the other side and that will flush it from the other direction. And hopefully flush out as much of the magnetite as possible. And you can see the water is a lot clearer now as I flush the water out for the second time on this filter. Once I'm happy, I have flushed out as much of the magnetite as possible. I can then obviously close the valve, remove the hose, refit the cap, making sure that the black washer is in the bottom, and then open up both the valves again. And don't forget to replace the magnet. And of course, if I want to remove the whole filter, I can do that also with both the valves closed. Having the valves on there makes it a pretty straightforward job. Now this is the third flush, which I'm doing right here. You would have also seen I did drain off quite a bit of water when I was cleaning this filter. So that's one of the reasons I'm not particularly keen on these filters, because obviously that's going to dilute any inhibitor which you might have in your system. Now here's a Spirotech filter that has been fitted onto a traditional system. You can see it looks exactly the same as the Valiant filter. The cleaning process is exactly the same whether you have the Spirotech or the Valiant filter. Now there's no isolation valves on this filter, so all we can do is to connect our hose onto the bottom of the filter, then open a valve at the bottom of the filter, let the water wash through until you are satisfied that there's no more magnetite being washed out of the filter. Then close the valve again, and that's about all you can do when the filter is installed like this. Don't forget to remove the magnet when you flush the filter out. I've left it in place just so we can see it says Spirotech on the front of the magnet. And finally, here we have two Spirotech filters. Both these filters are completely blocked and I'll replace them with different filters. Now, like I said earlier, there's no way of actually taking these apart, not unless you have a really big vise and a very big spanner because this screw joint here is glued together. So it's not supposed to come apart, but I've taken it apart so we can take a look inside the filter. And there you can see all the magnetite and other bits and bobs which have got stuck inside the filter. Now I'll just get a bowl there and I'll see what we can empty out. Now bear in mind, I've already taken this apart and some of the bits are missing from it because I've already tipped some of it out. And I'm just going to get a pair of pliers now and pull out that kind of metal sort of straining, I don't know what you call that, some sort of mesh thing. I guess it's supposed to try and collect the uh, magnetite and any other debris in your system. Now here's the bottom part of the filter and you can see how there's a lot of uh, debris there stuck in the bottom. I actually have to punch it out with the pliers there to get it out. And uh, there's also some sort of magnets. I, I'm not sure if that's in the new ones. I don't think it would be. The new filters have a much bigger magnet on the outside, that big black thing that goes on the outside of the filter. I'm not sure if that magnet inside there is actually doing any good, but uh, obviously there was a magnet inside there. And when I took the filter apart originally, this is what I was faced with. You got all this kind of, I don't know whether that's calcium or magnetite or whatever it is. There's a whole lot of stuff which is stuck up inside that filter there. Not being able to really take this filter apart and the way it's been designed meant I couldn't really tell whether I had cleaned enough of it away. Because you can see even with this uh, bridle here, when I'm poking there, there's a whole bunch of stuff which is stuck inside there and it goes all the way around. And uh, like I say, I'm, I'm not quite sure what this is because it's, it's white. It looks a bit like scale, but whatever it is, it's obviously stuck inside this and it's blocked the filter up. And you can see how it's also all stuck inside the filter body here. Like it's really wedged down inside there. 
and because I wasn't able to take the filter apart I wouldn't be able to tell it if I cleared all of it away to get a good flow through it. Now like I said I found this on a couple of systems now where these filters have been completely blocked. Maybe it's from neglect like they've never been cleaned out but either way uh, you shouldn't get a filter where it completely blocks like this. So this is another reason why I don't really like these filters. I still much prefer the AD MagnaClean filters because you can completely take those apart which gives you a really good idea of the condition of the system. And as the water is nice and clear and there's hardly any magnetite on a filter, I know this system is in good condition. Opposed to this MagnaClean which I took off another system and you can see all that black magnetite which is stuck all over the magnet there and uh, obviously this system is not in a good condition. Not being able to take a filter apart means you don't actually know if you've cleaned out all of the magnetite that might be in the filter. So that's about it then. So if you want to watch my video on 10 ways to reduce your gas bill, you can click on the video just here. And of course you can click on subscribe. You can click on the bell. Give me a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And it's always my toolbox friend. Bye for now. And I'll see you next time.